Hello, Michael here with a very quick introduction to using RenderMan 22. If you're already familiar with RenderMan, if you've used 21 or earlier, then a lot of this stuff is probably going to go without saying for you, and this may not be much of a tutorial for you, but if you just want to check out how the sort of basic workflow is, and if you haven't really used RenderMan or any other renderer before, if you're fairly new to Maya, uh, this will give you a good quick overview and if you're just interested in using Render Demand 22 this will give you an idea of some of the features that are available in it. So I've just got a, a fresh scene here and I'm going to go ahead and add in some geometry and just resize that and then I'm just going to add it to a new layer so I don't select it. Uh, but before I do that I'll go to the RenderMan 22.1 tab. Now if this isn't there, you will need to go up to Window, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, scroll down and make sure that you've got RenderMan for Maya loaded. Also you can go into your Render Settings, which is this button here, and make sure that your renderer is set to RenderMan and that will give you RenderMan options. So to get started, this has currently got a uh, blend, I think, attached to it, or whatever the default Maya shader is. We want to use a RenderMan shader for best optimization. So select it and click this button here. This is the Pixar Surface Shader button. That will assign a Pixar Surface Shader to any object that you have selected in the viewport. You can find that shader if you go to the Hypershade Editor with the most recent one that you've created, so Pixar Surface. We can rename that to be called Pixar Floor for this example and we're just going to keep it at the default settings and I'm just going to um, add this to this layer and that way I won't select it and I'm just going to create uh, three balls alright so I'm going to use a different shader on each one of those um, let's start with the one on the left but uh, if we want to render this, the first thing we need to do before we get carried away is add some lighting in. Um, so the camera can't see anything if there is no light. Um, just like you can't see anything if there's no light. So we need to create a light. I'll sh show you if I right click here, you get a couple of different options for light. If you just left click, you're going to get the Pixar rectangle light. And that's generally what you're going to use for a lot of things. So we'll just move that into place. The arrow there just means the direction the light's coming out of. You can just rotate it into place and resize it if you wish. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that being bigger it's going to have softer shadows. Um, and the larger it is it will also affect the strength of the light. Um, you can disable that um, but I'll go into that stuff in a separate tutorial. Uh, so we'll just go to the attribute editor for the light and we'll change the intensity to say 25. And see how that looks um, once I add a shader into this. So um, as I've created that, you'll see that in the attribute editor here on the right, we've got uh, Pixar Surface 2. So this is our, uh, this is going to be called our left Pixar shader. And we can change the color here um, and the diffuse channel. So the diffuse channel is at 1.0. So this is going to be basically your not shiny sort of matte finish channel. And you can make it more matte looking if you add roughness to it. So let's just, we can just render this actually and I can show you the difference. So to render this, we've got our light, we've got our camera obviously, we've got three balls, one of them's got a Pixar Surface Shaderer applied to it. Um, you'll see that in spite of the fact that we've changed it to um, blue, in here we can't actually see it as being blue. Um, Maya's viewport doesn't actually recognize the colors that you apply to it using the Pixar Surface. So don't worry if it doesn't change in the viewport, it will change in the render. So let's go to the IPR. IPR stands for Interactive Photorealistic Rendering, um, which just means that you've got a render that's working uh, using ray tracing and you can move the camera so it's interactive. So when you click this button, it'll start rendering and you'll get this uh, window pop up. This is called the IT uh, Viewer. Uh, there's a couple of options here. If you hit C, it'll give you the catalog. They'll give you a list of everything you've rendered and you can look at previous renders. Um, you can also use that button there. The inspector is on the right, that's I or this button here to collapse it or um, bring it back up and they'll, they'll give you info on your renders. In IPR mode it doesn't really give you that much information um, 
but if you're doing a final render which would be this button here it'll tell you how long it took to do that render so that's good for sort of uh, figuring out how long renders are taking so you, when you're trying to optimize things this button here will stop the IPR so if I run that IPR again I'm just going to minimize this so we can fit it in so you'll see as I move the camera in Maya the render updates now if you're coming from Winterman 21 um, you'll notice that this is a lot faster um, so the uh, card that I'm using is a GTX 1070. It's not a top-of-the-line uh, card, but it's pretty fast. Um, I think even if you're on a 1060, you'd still be pretty happy, in, or an older series like a 980 or something like that would be pretty cool. But compared to what we were doing with Renderman 21, I would say that's probably, at a guess, three or four times faster, maybe, just to do something like this. Um, and I can go up to a much higher resolution of notice without taking too much of a hit to performance. Um, I haven't gone and done any optimization. I could do some further stuff to get rid of the noise in these shadows, but I'll talk about noise and all that sort of thing in a separate tutorial. I'll get really down into it, but this is just a quick overview. So yeah, you can see that that left ball has got a pixel surface shader applied to it. These other two have just got blends, I think, or whatever it is, um, and we'll apply pixel surface shaders to those as well. So anytime you want to change the uh, material of an object, you have to apply a pixel surface shader. So we'll do that again, selecting the middle one, um, and we'll just open up the attribute editor again. We've got pixel surface three. We'll change that to pixel middle. Um, and you can do some other things here. So our first one was blue. We'll make this one red. And then we will go down to the primary specular channel and we'll just make the face color white which means that it will be very specular very shiny so if i run that ipr again you'll see that that middle ball is reflecting everything around including the purple uh, sorry the blue ball which appears purple in the reflection because the the reflection is mixing with the rinse of that ball um, but yeah if you're coming from 21 you'll notice how fast that is and that's that's pretty impressive yeah, really looking forward to doing some animation with that. That's, that's pretty cool. So for this final ball, I'll show you something slightly different. Um, we've also got the uh, preset browser. Um, and normally this comes up on the right. For some reason, it's decided to dock itself on the top. I like it on the right. So essentially, uh, this allows you to use a preset for... It's a Pixar Surface shader generally. Um, and it's got a preset material already made up for you so you could say red fabric it will create it and assign it to if you right click on it and import and, and assign to so you have to import it into the scene and assign it to the um, object so let's find something um, interesting to assign all right so what about this ice one so we'll uh, select our object hold uh, click right click on the um, ice and import and assign to selected and if we go into the hypershade editor again, um, the ice shader here um, will be the shader that we just created using the preset browser. So let's run that IPR again. So you'll see that we've got that translucent wavy surface ice thing happening. It's got a bit of a weird surface. There might be something slightly wrong with that bump map, maybe. I'd have to investigate that. but. Uh, that could actually be the way that this uh, sphere is UV'd because it's probably not UV'd. Um, it's not. It's got triangles and whatnot, so it's probably not the best thing to be assigning that to. But you know, that looks pretty decent. Um, otherwise, we can have a look. So yeah, you could go through the presets browser, and there's a lot of fun things you can do there. Whiskey, everyone loves whiskey. Um, I'm drinking Abelor at the moment, a 12 year. Um, but you could also have water or you could have soapy bubbles. I wouldn't really recommend drinking those though, but rendering them is very cool. Um, so have a play through those and um, see if there's anything you like. Keep them in mind because you might end up using them in future. They're a really good baseline um, to start with, but you'll usually have to edit them a little bit to work for your particular needs. Uh, let's briefly touch on the settings. So you've got your common settings here. Um, if you are running your animation, you have to set it to animation and you have to set a start frame and an end frame. Um, but if I'm just rendering the current frame, if you're rendering it out as a full render, which is this button here, uh, you will use current frame. Choose your camera like for usual. Um, image size will set your image size. So uh, 1080p, for example, if you're do rendering something for 
your standard screen sizes um, probably all the way up to 4k nowadays if you really wish 4k is going to be sort of a little bit on the heavier side uh, for just testing out your shots and stuff probably hd 540 is fine most of the time hd 720 if you want to get a little bit zesty but um, that's fine and obviously if you wish you can set a custom size here with width and height otherwise we've got our render settings here um, basically the samples is going to be how detailed it is and I, I'll, I've got a tutorial already for um, a lot of this stuff for 21 and a lot of it is actually still valid so I'm not going to spend too much time going through here but if you're looking for some quick and dirty increases in, um, in the quality of your render um, you can just increase this max sample number and if you increase the minimum sample number then you'll also get a higher um, a, a better value render when it's set to zero it sort of automatically increases itself depending on what the max sample is um, it's this it's the square root of this um, sample and I don't know what the square root of 256 is off the top of my head eight something I don't I don't know man <laughs> um, but uh, yeah so if you just want to increase your uh, get rid of noise or something really quickly if you're just testing stuff out or if you're just new to it you can just click 250 uh, type in 256 type in thousand uh, you, you generally wouldn't be going much higher than 256 or 512 and then you'll be using something like denoise denoise is something that we do in AIV now uh, and the in the beauty AIV you can go down and we can select denoise and enable it this is only for final renders um, it won't show an IPR otherwise if you're doing um, animation you can turn on motion blur turn it off I'm probably not going to get into advanced again. I'll do separate tutorials for that in workspace. It's the same thing again. The main places that you're going to spend most of your time here are your um, sampling and common. If you're just trying to render stuff out and you're learning, this is pretty much where you're going to be at. Um, and that will pretty much get you started as well. So, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll quickly import a more complex model into the scene and we'll sort of see how that renders. All right, let's look at uh, small robot rendering. Uh, this is that just 128 samples. That is pretty quick. Usually um, in 21, it would have taken quite a while just to even see him. And now you can see it's this is at 128 samples at um, 540, I believe. Um, so pretty fast to get the image up on screen and then start denoising it or just increasing the sample rate um, and obviously interacting with it on the fly. Um, that's moving quite quickly. So just uh, for people out there that are a little bit more experienced, that's a 2K texture map, texture map onto this character. Um, and then just at the default 128 settings. So if, say for instance, um, this will increase the render time a little bit, but if we went to the render settings and we changed it to say 720, IPR again. Not a great deal of difference in the, in the uptime on that render. Um, and obviously I'm just rendering one small object. This is not like rendering a scene, but if you're doing some quick vis dev, this is pretty cool. This is, um, I would say, I would say it's probably as fast as Redshift, um, which has been my primary renderer for a little while now. So if you're comparing it to something like that, um, I would say it, it's likely that I will probably switch to RenderMan um, for commercial work now. Um, Whereas I was using Redshift in the past, past because it was just quicker to use when you're just using a single uh, humanoid PC rather than some sort of alien monster STI computer. Um, so yeah, you can see zooming in there. Still pretty good. Um, obviously still getting noise. Still going to have to run your denoise on um, your frames. But you're going to get your frames rendered out a lot quicker. And the denoise is not going to have to do as much work. So overall, I'd say, particularly for people in animation, this is probably a bit of a boon. Um, and it looks like it's a, it's a really good start um, to RenderMan 22. I'm really excited to get back into RenderMan and start doing some more rendering. Uh, maybe look at doing a little bit more animation with this. Um, so you can look forward to seeing that hopefully in the future on this channel. Um, otherwise, you'll be seeing a lot of tutorials I'd say in the near future. I'll be overseas actually this week uh, from the day after tomorrow uh, but I'm gonna record a few tutorials before then and just put them up on the channel and they'll they'll go live over the next few days or so uh, while I'm out of the country so I might not be able to respond to any questions that you have immediately. Um, I am gonna be on holiday but 
um, I will be right back into it proper once I get back so uh, yes I will see you all then I hope this has been an interesting uh, overview for all of you out there that either that have used RenderMan previously or that are new to the product if you haven't got 22 yet and you've got my 2017 or later um, it, it should be compatible with what you've got so jump over on the RenderMan website check out the non-commercial version if you're doing it for just student work uh, or pr uh, personal projects um, make sure you read the terms of using the and using and publishing renders or uh, using RenderMan because there are some stipulations to the non-commercial version of RenderMan, um, which is why I'm probably going to be buying it. So yeah, um, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial though. Thanks for watching and um, happy rendering.